It had been Mehmed I who finally reunited the Ottoman state following their crushing defeat at the hands of Timur and the subsequent civil war. And so, when he passed away in early summer of 1421, the big question was whether or not his absence would lead the country straight back into anarchy. Knowing that this was a real risk, Mehmed had not taken any chances. He had made sure that the Grand Vizier Bayezid Pasha was going to keep the death a secret until his 16-year-old son could arrive for his coronation. The plan turned out to work well, and some 40 days after his passing, the Ottomans had themselves a new sultan. The young man was called Murad II, and had up until now been governor of Amasya in eastern Anatolia, hence the long wait. Despite his age, he had already participated in the suppression of Bedreddin's rebellions in 1416, as well as the capture of Samson from the Jandarids two years later. But regardless of his military credentials and the fact that his father's plan had prevented any would-be pretenders to claim the right to succeed him, Murad's rule was not beyond being put into question, and indeed it soon was. His first challenger was Mustafa, the same Mustafa who had fought and been captured alongside his father Bayezid at the Battle of Ankara, and who had previously rebelled against his father Mehmed I. Now, just like then, he was supported by the Byzantines. Mustafa got control of the European portion of the empire rather quickly, but was outmaneuvered and defeated when trying to take Anatolia. As revenge for this was unprovoked enmity, Murad then lay siege to Constantinople, but was forced to give up when the Byzantines, together with a number of Anatolian Beyliks, supported yet another pretender. This time it was Murad's 13-year-old brother, incidentally also called Mustafa. He began to besiege Bursa and captured Isnik, but it wasn't long before he'd been captured himself and that Murad had him executed. In the aftermath of these rebellions, many of the unruly Beyliks were annexed by the Ottomans and the Byzantines were forced to start paying tribute. With peace in Anatolia, Murad turned all of his attention west and managed to capture the important city of Thessalonica in 1430. Although this had been the last major Byzantine city aside from Constantinople, it had recently been sold to the Venetians in the hope that they would be able to defend it from the Ottoman siege. But despite the Venetian presence, it could be taken with the help of artillery, and although it's uncertain when the Ottomans first started to use cannons, this would have been one of the earlier cases. Thessalonica was sacked, and it said that about a fifth of the population went on to be enslaved. Some of the people who now decided to flee the city were intellectuals who would contribute to the Renaissance in the West. One of them, called Theodorus Gaza, was a humanist remembered for his unusually accurate translations of Aristotle and a defender of his philosophy against the enthusiastic Platonist Chemistus Plethon. Another one was Andronikos Kalistos, who would go on to teach Greek thought in various Italian cities, in Paris, and eventually in London, where he passed away in 1476. While this was going on in the south, a conflict was brewing up in Serbia. In 1427, the king, Stefan Lazarevic, also known as Stefan the Tall, had passed away, and a dispute emerged regarding the domination over Serbia between the Hungarians and Ottomans. They initially came to an agreement making George Brankovic the new king, but after their contract had run out, Sigismund of Hungary sent an envoy demanding that he be recognized as sovereign over Bosnia, Serbia and Bulgaria. In other words, he was declaring war. The two parties would go on to fight over the area back and forth for over a decade, but as the Hungarians and Serbs were joined by more and more allies, it became increasingly difficult for the Ottomans to hold their own. In 1443, while Murad was busy dealing with Karaman in Anatolia, the Pope declared a crusade against the Turks, and an army led by the new king of Hungary and Poland, Vladislav, advanced into the Ottoman territories, capturing Nish and Sofia. They were finally apprehended by a large Ottoman force at the Battle of Slatica. It ended more or less with a draw, but when spring arrived the following year, neither side was willing to go back on campaign, and a peace deal meant to last for ten years was signed later on in June. After this was settled, Murad decides to do something very unusual. Feeling that he had secured his borders both to the east and west, he abdicates. The new sultan is now his twelve-year-old son, Mehmed II. Exactly why Murad decided to do this is disputed. One explanation is that he had fallen into depression after the recent death of his eldest son. Another one is that he wanted to prevent confusion by crowning his successor early on. After all, the Byzantines were keeping a potential pretender in prison and could release him at any time. And finally, some argue that he simply wasn't interested in ruling. 
Ever since coming to power, Murad had been trying to build up an image of himself as the noble Ghazi king, a pious and simple man, a champion of justice, and someone who on the battlefield sought peace, not more wars. In keeping with this image, some that after having fought for over 20 years, Murad believed that he had done his duty and could now begin with his greater jihad after so many smaller ones. In other words, he would turn inward and try to clarify his soul. Regardless of the reasoning behind his abdication, Murad would not be able to stay idle for long, as already in September that year, the Pope had nullified the peace agreement, and the Hungarians, along with their allies, once again started marching into Ottoman lands. But despite the bad news from the West, Murad for the longest time refused to return from his self-imposed exile in Manisa, and only left when the young Sultan eventually ordered him to. With the help of the Genoese, he and his army managed to cross over from Anatolia to Bulgaria, something that the Crusaders had not been counting on, and met with the hostile forces on the 10th of November at the Battle of Varna. Initially, it seemed to be going well for the Christians, who managed to hold out against the far greater Ottoman force, but their young king ignored the cautionary advice of his seasoned commander John Hunyadi, and led the bulk of his forces against the Ottoman center in an attempt to capture the Sultan. Murad's elite bodyguard then repelled the attack, and the king was killed. Eventually, the Crusaders had to retreat, having lost some 20,000 men. The Ottoman casualties, on the other hand, were closer to 50,000. In fact, there were so many dead that it's said to have taken three days for Murad to realize that it actually won. Following the battle, Murad returned to Manisa, but his exile wouldn't be long this time either. In the following years, the Byzantine prince Constantine of Maria managed to capture large parts of Greece, forcing Ottoman vassals to pay him tribute. Meanwhile, a former Ottoman military commander called Skanderbeg had revolted and managed to unite his fellow Albanian countrymen against the Turks. In 1445, the Janissaries also staged a revolt, demanding, among other things, to have Mehmed deposed, and although it was put down, Murad eventually let himself be persuaded to return to power. He soon led his armies to Greece, where he quickly pushed back Constantine to the Peloponnese, and after thoroughly plundering the area, forced him to pay tribute. Next, he turned towards Albania, but before he could get there, news arrived that John Hunyadi had once again marched into his territories, and so the Sultan continued north and managed to beat the Hungarians at the Second Battle of Kosovo. Skanderbeg, who had joined up forces with Hunyadi, now returned to Albania, quickly followed by Murad. He fortified himself in the castle of Kruge, and despite besieging it for a longer period of time, the Ottomans could not get through and were forced to give up. On his return to Adirne, Murad II fell ill and dies on the 3rd of February 1451, leaving his throne once again to Mehmed II, this time for good. <laughs> 